It's Wednesday afternoon at the WCPO studios, and this is your WCPO High School Insider Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Dyer. Continue to be ambitious here on the High School Insider Podcast as we uh, continue bringing extensive coverage of high school football and bringing some area head football coaches and players on uh, this podcast via Skype. And pleased to be joined by three area head coaches along with some of their players this afternoon as well. Colerain coach Sean Cutright, LaSalle coach Pat McLaughlin, and Harrison coach Derek Rehage. And they were kind enough to uh, take a few minutes and also bring their players aboard. Uh, we are going to get to them in just a bit. As always, this WCPO High School Insider podcast is presented by our local Chick-fil-A restaurants where the winning play is always chicken. Download the app today for extra points. As always, you can find this podcast on Google Play, Stitcher, and Apple Podcasts. Want to bring in Colerain coach Sean Cutright and senior safety Deshaun Pace and senior center Ace Aaron Schwender. Guys, thanks for taking a few minutes this afternoon. How are you? Great. Thanks for having us, Mike. Well, hey, uh, obviously Colerain, 5-1 and one on the season, have won 79 consecutive Greater Miami Conference games, and the Cardinals play at 3-3 three and three Hamilton on Friday night. If you haven't checked out uh, the Steve Shuck uh, playoff projections, be sure to do so on WCPO.com. He has uh, Colerain number three right now in Division One, Region 4, but obviously a, a long way to go. We're only at Week 7 and uh, plenty of time here left in the regular season. Coach Cutright, just want to get right to it here. Big win over Sycamore 27-7 to last week uh, during homecoming. And uh, what were you most pleased about uh, with the effort there with the Cardinals? I thought our defense played well. Uh, our offense executed. Uh, overall, we were happy with uh, with the game plan and the execution the players sent. Uh, it was nice to have a night that wasn't 85, 90 degrees too. So it was definitely a beautiful night for football. I know we are Colerain.com and Chris Himanitis. He asked you a little bit about uh, your junior quarterback, Freddie Johnson. Uh, tell us about uh, his development through this season and what you saw from him last week against the Aviators. Sure. Our offense has been coming along, getting better every week, and that's our goal. Uh, as you know, we lost a lot of touchdowns last year. So uh, the biggest thing is getting those guys confident, and that comes from our quarterback. Freddie's been reading it better, uh, been doing a better job of making good decisions, and uh, our offense goes as well as our quarterback does. So when he starts making good decisions and, and the right reads and it slows down a little bit for him, uh, I think that uh, he's definitely in his way to – to being much more productive than he was earlier in the year. I know you said after the game you had a couple offensive linemen out the week before that game. Uh, mm-hmm. How nice was it to to kind of get your O line back in order there and be ready to go? Oh yeah, it's always nice to get those guys back. You know, they're the most underrated part of the team, but probably the most important part. And uh, to get some of those guys back and and have them healthy and and raring to go, we're excited about uh, about the next few weeks. See what we can do with them back. Uh, a guy to your left could certainly speak to uh, some experience. Uh, Ace Aaron Schwender, uh, you've started virtually every game since your sophomore season, 35 games if I'm not mistaken. Um, just tell me about uh, that experience and how much that helps you week to week, especially this late in the season. Um, it definitely does help to have some experience. You get rid of some of those butterflies in your stomach and stuff like that going into bigger games. Uh, and this season we have every week it has to be a big game for us. Um, looked at as an underdog. And uh, another thing that the experience helps is just know that you have to prepare every week, just like it's your last week. Uh, so it helps keep intensity up at practice and uh, make sure everybody's on track. What does Colerain football mean to you, Ace? I mean, you're, you're a captain, you're a guy that's obviously been through the trenches and, and, and <coughs> been a part of this uh, great success that the Cardinals program has had uh, for a very long time. Uh, yeah, I grew up Colerain and... Uh, I can't imagine myself being anything but Colerain, but I just love Colerain football. It's uh, changed me as a man, and these two guys right next to me have helped be a big part of that coming up through all the way through my high school career. Um, and I just want to leave an impact on it that will set the stage for many more players to come after me. Tell me about that, because I think a lot of people see Colerain football, they see the wins, they see the success, everything on the field, but you just struck a chord there by you saying it's helped you as develop into a young man um, just through the years, especially now being a senior. Can you talk about that off-the-field impact that's it's made for you personally? Yeah, uh, just every everything that the coaches do, um, I think there's a bigger purpose behind it, and they touch on it a lot during our off-season when we're doing our lifting conditioning. And they just say that you're going to be a better man because of this. And uh, one thing that the coaches have said before is make football need you more than you need football. And that's something I've incorporated in my life. 
and I love playing football, but I also realize that it's preparing me for life. The more I've gone through core in high school football. You work with three different quarterbacks, Gunnar Leyendecker, going back to him a couple years ago, uh, obviously Deontay Smith more last year and your guys' run to Canton, and then now Freddie Johnson. Uh, take me through uh, what each of those guys are like and what's it been like just kind of work through three quarterbacks during your high school career. Um, it's definitely been different, not as much because of them, but because of me. I've been learning a lot more each year. Um, one thing that all three of those guys have is great leadership skills. They're able to control the tempo of the game and practice all the time, which is very respectable. Uh, they all are hard workers. Um, so I guess the biggest change has been me every year, learning more about my team, uh, learning more how to be a leader, and kind of just stepping into that role more. Coach, you come from the defensive side of things, but what is a guy like Ace, uh, what is he meant to, to Cole Rain? Uh, he's a coach on the field. You know, we talk about that all the time. If you if you know, you know what's going on when you come up the line, you just yell, check, check. Ace will get you going the right direction. It, it's it's experience that you can't replace. But in, in the center, in the trenches, like you mentioned, with three quarterbacks in there, and uh, he knows our offense just as well as anybody else. And he can come to the sidelines, help us make adjustments, help our offensive coaches out and say, hey, they're doing this, have to snap the ball, you know, and give us some suggestions. We look at it on film. It's wonderful to have somebody out there that, that has that much knowledge about our offense and uh, is able to help us out on the sidelines to make adjustments. Another coach on the field is a guy to your right, uh, Deshaun Pace. Uh, everybody uh, who goes to Coleraine football games knows the impact that Deshaun has. And certainly University of Cincinnati football fans are eagerly anticipating uh, your arrival there on campus a year from now. But uh, Deshaun, tell us a little bit about this defense. Uh, you guys not allowing more than 15 points, or right, right at 14.8 points per game uh what's been special about this defense this season um what's very special about our defense is the brother brotherhood um the way we came together at the beginning of the season uh i don't think we're mentally prepared for the season but um as the season goes on we get better and better as the week goes on and um being a leader it helps me get better as a man because uh just because of the team, like, they just helped me. How much did you have to stay patient, Deshaun, I mean, through that process? You mentioned maybe we weren't ready to go right from the outset, uh, even though you guys had that big opening win over Wayne, but, uh, you know, only lost by a touchdown to St. X in week two. But uh, how much did you have to trust the process now to get to this point of the season? Um, I had to trust the process uh, a lot because um, it's always a bounce back. I mean, you can't win all of them. Um, take your losers and you move on. What's uh, Colerain football meant to you, Deshaun? We talked to you, did a story about your family, obviously your brother and his impact last season. But now as you kind of get later in the senior season, obviously you guys hope that things uh, don't end anytime <laughs> soon. But uh, can you kind of reflect on uh, what this team has meant to you, not only athletically, but personally as well? Um, like A said, um, it helped me as a better man. Because like outside of football, um, Football helped me because um, every play you get knocked down and it's a choice to get back up. And it's going to show you uh, later in life that you got to uh, face adversity. And like, if you got to fight it, it's going to help you. What have you seen from uh, Deshaun this year, Coach, in terms of you knew what you, you were going to get from an athletic standpoint this preseason, obviously going back to last year, what he did as a safety for you. But uh, uh, what have you seen just in terms of his leadership? You know, he, he's more consistent, and that's what we talked about in the offseason, being more consistent. Uh, he's become a much better leader. And, uh, you know, we have some pretty good practices out here. We had a pretty uh, pretty good one yesterday. Uh, Deshaun and Ace get a little fired up on both sides of the ball, and we go ones-on-ones. And, uh, you know, they, 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 there's no doubt who the leader is on offense or defense. They get both, uh, both their sides of the ball rolling. Eleven guys sort of follow wherever they take them. So, yeah, they're they're critical to our success every week. Tell us about that intensity. Can you kind of illustrate that for us? I'm sorry, Coach. Sure, here. Yeah. Well, we get ones on ones, and we try to do that quite a bit on Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday, and Thursday, not as much. And, uh, you know, we always say iron sharpens iron. So we're out there, and it, it's all in good fun. We, uh, we, we, we sort of get on each other's. We have a new thing that we've been doing the last few weeks that they sort of like. 
So Ace and Freddie will call the offense for three plays, and Deshaun uh, will call the defense for three plays. So it's interesting because no coaches are allowed to coach for those six plays. <laughs> and there's a little competition on the line. Uh, the loser has to do a little bit of running. The winner gets to go get water and sort of pick on them and uh, needle them a little bit that the, that day they won. So it's all in good fun, and and I think they've enjoyed that. Who's got the upper hand, guys? defense <laughs> <laughs> they did yesterday. yesterday i think ace is You're ready, to, ready yep. to go today so. gotcha well hey guys really appreciate your time coring coach sean cutright and we have senior deshaun pace senior ace aaron schwender really appreciate uh your perspective and best of luck to the cardinals going forward thank you thanks mike appreciate your time thank you guys and uh, as always, this High School Insider podcast is presented by our local Chick-fil-A restaurants. That is where the winning play is always chicken. Go for the extra point with the side of their new macaroni and cheese today. I want to bring in Harrison coach Derek Rehage. Uh, he's also joined by senior quarterback Connor Kinnett and senior linebacker Jake Reardon. Guys, thanks for joining me. Guys, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having us, Mike. Appreciate it. Obviously, uh, Harrison 5-1 and one overall, 3-0 and oh in the Southwest Ohio Conference. Uh, the Wildcats have won four consecutive games, and Harrison is going for its fourth consecutive postseason appearance this year, uh, projected to be number two in Division Two, Region 8 by Steve Shuck. A big game Friday night at Little Miami. Obviously, a lot of ramifications within the conference. Uh, Coach, what's been your message to your team as you prepare for uh, the trip on Friday night? Uh, the biggest message late is one play at a time um, taking things slow not getting too overexcited and then trying to come out and be very physical from the word go um, I, I was speaking this morning and I think that um, if we can control their D-line and our D-line can have a successful game we'll be good but this game will come down to the trenches who can win in the trenches Coach, what have you liked most about the way you guys have been playing here the past couple weeks? Obviously, uh, you know Connor's going to put up some big numbers. Your wide receivers, uh, Levi Tidwell had uh, four receptions for 113 yards. Uh, senior uh, wide receiver C.J. Young, four receptions, 119 yards, two scores. Um, uh, what's been the be biggest key to your success offensively? The biggest key to our success offensively has been we've no sacks the last three weeks. Um, that's been huge for us. We've given Connor time to, to throw the ball. We've been able to run the ball um, with more success. Um, but offensively, it's the fact that we've been able to keep Connor upright and we haven't had any pressure in his face. Connor, how big is that for you to just have that uh, poise in the pocket there and, and not have to worry about uh, the pressure? It's big. I mean, not just physically, but mentally too, knowing that there's not been pressure coming. So you can keep your eyes downfield more and find the open gut. Jake, what do you like most about the way you guys have been playing uh, here as of late here the past few games? Um, I like our D-line. Our D-line's been doing really well. Same with our four seniors, uh, corners and safeties. They've been solid. Is this what you guys kind of expected? I mean, uh, Coach, maybe you can answer this one. I mean, 5-1, and one, obviously you want to win every game, but um, did, you, did you feel like this was going to be a year where you had some things uh, where you can control your own destiny within the conference and even possibly get a, a very high seed and host in the playoffs? Yeah, we knew going in, we had over 20 seniors going in, which was the biggest class we've had since, I think, 88 here. Um, I didn't know we were going to be this good defensively. Um, we have um, eight seniors that start on defense, some weeks it's nine, depending on what we see, um, if it's a heavy run team or heavy pass team. But our leadership on defense has been phenomenal, and our defense has just played great all year. Besides Jake, uh, can you tell us some other uh, guys who have really stood out for you defensively? Well, I mean, we could go up and down the court, but uh, up and down the field, excuse me. But in the back end, it's it's really been the, the DB, Sam Heimkreider, Blake Cox, Kyler Fankhauser, Mike Wade have all had tr tremendous years, all four seniors. And then up front, um, we took one of our linebackers last year and, and Derek Smith, and we moved him to three technique, and it's been a really, really big blessing for us. And then um, we have Josh Ridings and, and Mason Daly, who played defensive end, who've just been really, really good for us at the end position this year. Connor and Jake, you know, Coach just mentioned the large group of seniors that you have and just that experience that goes along with it. Connor, I guess I'd ask you first, I mean, um, how nice has that been um, to have that you know, leadership across the board and, and have that camaraderie with your other classmates uh, going into this season? It's been good. I mean, leading the team by players is better than coaches. I mean, 
stuff gets done better when it's coming from the player and not the coaches constantly. So having the coaches lead not only the other senior, I mean, having the, us lead not only the other seniors, but the uh, underclassmen and all that, getting them ready to go. Jake, what's Harrison football meant to you here the past few years? Um, uh, I would say that's fun. Um, I think with Jake, Jake, Jake is, um, I think it's a brotherhood for Jake. And he, um, Jake's not a man of many words when he comes on the field, but his play speaks louder than anything. And I think if Jake had to tell you, um, all of his guys play football and they just mean the world to him. And we preach every day that Harrison football is about family. Um, drinking the motto's kind of been all year, drink the green juice, do the little things right, take care of each other. You know, when you see a teammate down, stand up for him, help him out in the classroom, whatever it may be. And I think that's that's the biggest message that, you know, Jake and the defense have tried to – because when they celebrate, it's everybody celebrating. And it's just been some chemistry on defense that we haven't seen here since I've been here in my seven years. Connor, what's it been like around the community? I mean, to, to play there on Friday night, obviously a special community there in Harrison and, and close-knit. Um, it has a lot of pride in, in, in athletics, and especially within the football program. How, how much fun has that been for you? been fun i mean the crowds have been solid across the board you can tell they're getting bigger um away games opening night we played about a little over an hour away i mean stands are packed so i mean people are showing up it's a big help for our game coach i I pose the same question to you what's it been like just to see those crowds on friday night it, it's been amazing, and the community and, and everything else is really bought in. And you can feel something special about this group in the building, in the school, um, just the way the boys carry themselves. It's been energetic, and, and you know we need all those fans to show up on Friday night because we know Little Miami is going to be rocking, and, and they're going to be ready for us. And um, we need to have match their energy on Friday night. But our crowd has been phenomenal all year. They love what the boys do. Um, you know, the local uh, restaurant puts a score up right away, and it's just been awesome. So it's definitely a small-town feel, and they definitely cherish how the Wildcats are doing on Friday nights. Great stuff. Harrison coach Derek Rehage, also joined by quarterback Connor Kinnett and senior linebacker Jake Reardon. Best of luck, best of luck to the Wildcats going forward, and uh, we'll talk to you down the road. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, guys. That was Harrison football coach Derek Rehage talking about the Wildcats. And we're going to jump over and stay in Division Two, Region 8, but jump over to LaSalle now and bring in Coach Pat McLaughlin and also uh, junior quarterback Zach Branham and senior running back Cameron Porter. Guys, thanks for your patience. And uh, LaSalle 6-0 for the first time since 2015, our WCPO Game of the Week. This week is LaSalle at 7-0 Covington Catholic and an uh, outstanding matchup uh, featuring uh, Ohio and Northern Kentucky teams. Uh, last week in a big 41-20 win over Moeller, Zach Branham uh, tied a school record for the most rushing touchdowns in a game with five. Uh, and a very elite company there and tying uh, former standout Jeremy Larkin, who uh, did that twice against Olin Tangi and Harrison back in 2014. Zach, what was it like rushing for the five touchdowns last week against Moeller? Uh, it was amazing. I honestly didn't go into the game expecting I was going to do that, but throughout the game I noticed that's the way the game was going, so I just prided myself on that and did whatever I can for the team to get the victory. Cameron, you were part of the last, uh, the most recent state championship team in 2016 along with kicker Jake Seibert, obviously, and uh, uh, I know you know what that feeling is like having that state championship uh, even as, as a freshman, but now as a senior, I mean, how much do you want to make this uh, indelible stamp on uh, uh, your high school career? It would mean the world to me to uh, finish my career out with the state championship. Uh, it would truly be a blessing. Um, I tell everybody who asks about the team, uh, this team kind of reminds me of the 2016 team with uh, all the talent on offense and the talent on defense, um, the way we fly around and we make plays. So it would definitely be awesome. Coach, how much of a test will this be Friday night? You go over to Covcath and uh, obviously – you know, a, a opponent that you won't see again. It's not in your conference and you won't see in the playoffs. But uh, what are you looking to get out of this game? Well, first of all, these are the type of games that you want to play. You know, you're, they're 7-0 and and we're undefeated, uh, an interstate battle. But um, we're very proud of our league, the GCL, and they remind me of a GCL team. Very well coached. They play hard, obviously, at Catholic school. So uh, to me, this is just another GCL game. Um, but to go over there, uh, it's going to be a great atmosphere. It should be a good ball game. Um, they got a great tight end. 87 is fantastic, but they have a lot of good, good players besides him. The quarterback's good. Uh, their defense is, reminds me of our defense. They really run around uh, and get to the ball. Uh, their offense, they take shots. So 
Uh, I think it's going to be a physical uh, type of game. Uh, whoever can run the ball, whoever uh, doesn't make mistakes will probably have a great chance to win. You have two offensive guys obviously with you, but uh, who's playing really well, particularly on defense for you now? Uh, a, a lot of guys are playing well at defense. Devontae Smith had two picks last week, uh, two big uh, plays in the game. Uh, Luke Thieman last week, I think, he had nine, uh, nine, uh, nine solo tackles and an assist and then also had a sack. Uh, but Issa and Jalen, uh, Jay Moore's doing well, Cole Hildebrand, uh, Ben Blevins. Really, it's, it, we're, we're playing good team defense. Um, we're, we're playing our responsibility. We're Like Cam said, we're uh, hustling around, getting to the ball. Uh, and so our, our thing on defense is just don't give up the big play and we'll have a shot to be successful. What do you like most about the way the guy to your right has been managing the game, that, that being Zach Branham? Uh, we knew all along that Zach's a very smart kid, uh, both on the field and off the field. Um, he takes everything in stride. He takes coaching. I wish I could say I was the one, I've, I've been the one coaching him, but Brett's done a great job. The offensive staff is putting in uh, fantastic game plans each week, and we do a lot of RPOs, and Zach has a lot on his plate. I think sometimes when, uh, if the game plan, for example, is to come in and stop the inside running game with Cam or Gibran, that opens it up for Zach. And so he's taking advantage of that opportunity. Uh, we probably need to throw, throw the ball a little bit more, maybe a little bit better. I think when that, when that chance comes for him, he'll be able to do that too. How strong is your backfield right now, Coach? Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. I, I know <laughs> that there are a lot of guys say that they have a pretty good backfield, but I'll take, uh, I'll take the guy to my left and the guy to my right, uh, uh, add Gibran in there uh, as well. And I think we got as good as, back, as good a backfield as anybody. I think they'll be the first to tell you uh, it's, a, it's a direct product of the offseason weight room and a, and a product of our offensive line. We're playing about six or seven, eight guys in the offensive line. Uh, they're playing hard, and maybe some holes that weren't there this year or, there, or weren't there that last year or there this year. And so uh, a lot of the success uh, should be attributed to them. Zach, what have you learned from Cameron? Uh, he's taught me just what it's like to be on the, on the field Friday nights, what it's, what it's like to be a leader to the whole offense. He's just been teaching me little things to do to get our team better and to get myself better. And he's just been a great role model to me. Cam, what have you seen out of Zach? I mean, just he's put up some big time numbers already, I and mean, we're we're just entering week seven. Um, last year, uh, we all knew Zach was a great player, but I think this year he just took it to a whole nother level. Um, he definitely matured, his game matured, and uh, it's definitely showing there out there on the field. Uh, he took a, a big uh, leadership role in the off season with weightlifting and everything like that, and he's just been awesome. Everything we can ask for. Before I let you guys go, Coach, maybe you can chime in here too. A couple weeks ago, you went up to uh, Buffalo and uh, really took care of business, 48 to nothing, if I'm not mistaken, over a St. Joseph's team there. But uh, you got stuck in traffic. I was just kind of wondering, I mean, that was such a quick trip. You guys went up there. Kind of take us through that uh, and how, how resilient you guys were and, and, and you know, really kind of taking care of business from a very long trip. From, from what I understand, you came back the same day as well. We did. It was a probably ended up being a, probably a 15-hour trip total. We left uh 5.30 in the morning, the bus pulled out at 5.30 at LaSalle. I think we got back in uh, about 3.30 uh, on Saturday morning. So, uh, you know, one of, one of the benefits, if you, if you look at it, that or a drawback, we don't have a lot of games that we play with other teams in the city, which is fine. So we're playing teams from uh, Mansfield, Massachusetts, and Covington, and Dayton, uh, and Columbus, and all, all, over the, all over the state, which is fine. And this game opened up. It was an opportunity for us to go play a good team in Buffalo, another LaSalle in school. Uh, and so you know, we don't worry about what we can, can't control. And so the, the drive up there, it's, it was like grade school football. We literally got there about an hour and a half before the game, got dressed, went out there and played, went and ate pizza afterwards, had some wings, got on the bus and went home. But, you know, the kids handled it well. Um, I, I'm not really nervous. I wasn't really nervous. We got great leadership with Cam and Zach and the seniors, uh, and they knew what, what, it, what it entailed going into it. Uh, we got the win, and we came back and got ready to play for the next week. Is that something you can maybe think about maybe later on? And obviously, you know, you have a tough schedule. Um, I think your your next, what, four opponents are something like 21-4 and four combined record. Uh, but but an, an adversity uh, such as that situation where you don't normally have to drive that long, like you said, you pull out 5.30 in the morning and make it a 15-hour day. I mean, how does that kind of build some character as you kind of go forward here late in the season? Well, I think I think our kids are just resilient. They're tough. They got good character. Um, you know, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have done that if I didn't think our football team was mature enough to handle it. Uh, and I think we have the senior leadership. We have the coaching staff. We have a supportive administration. Uh, we put those kids in that position. 
Uh, they handled it. Uh, and, and honestly, I think it's an opportunity. You look at that as an opportunity uh, to see how your team is going to handle or face some type of adversity. I mean, if that's the worst thing that happens to us this year on the field or off the field, that we have to drive up to Buffalo and play a football game, then we all should feel pretty blessed. LaSalle coach Pat McLaughlin, junior quarterback Zach Branham, and also senior running back Cam Porter. Thanks, guys, for your time and perspective, and uh, best of luck to the Lancers going forward. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, guys. So there we have it. Uh, we had Colerain, we had Harrison, and we had LaSalle here on the WCPO High School Insider Podcast. Great insight from all those coaches and players and uh, looking to always bring you the exclusive access and inside perspective that you won't get anywhere else here on the WCPO High School Insider Podcast. Like I mentioned before, make sure to check out our Shucks projections, the first one of this 2019 season. Steve Shuck, the commissioner of the Greater Miami Conference, is going to continue to assist WCPO and all the postseason projections going forward until the last weekend of the regular season, November 1st and 2nd. Uh, he's also going to be on air, and also we're going to try to get him on this podcast to give some uh, uh, insight into what everybody's going to be talking about here the next few weeks, the playoffs, uh, 224 playoff qualifiers around the state of Ohio. We have seven divisions, obviously seven regions here locally. The top eight make the playoffs. Top four will host first-round playoff games, and the uh, bottom four of each region will obviously have to travel. The second-round games are neutral sites, all roads leading to Canton, uh, December 5th through 8th. The state championships are back at Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium uh, for a third consecutive season. Um, so definitely want to follow our WCPO.com coverage. Follow me on Twitter, at Mike Dyer. I'm going to be, be at uh, Princeton High School at Viking Stadium Friday night as Fairfield uh, tries to become 7-0 and for the first time in program history. The program dates back to 1934, believe it or not, and the Indians are going to take on a 4-2 and Princeton team that certainly would love to get not only a win within this conference, but a lot of computer points at stake because Fairfield is uh, right there at the top of Division One, Region 4 with St. Xavier. So that's all we have for you this week on the WCPO High School Insider Podcast. We will be back next week. We'll have more insight for you on everything high school football. Thanks again for watching and for listening. We'll talk to you soon.